Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, I'm going to show you how to do bi-directional communication between your Arduino and your Raspberry Pi. So up until this point, I've shown you how to send communication one way. So I've shown you how to send communication from the Arduino to the Raspberry Pi, and I've shown you how to send communication from the Raspberry Pi to the Arduino. In today's setup, we are going to be doing a bi-directional communication. So basically what we're going to have is we're going to have an analog temperature sensor that is going to be connected to the Arduino and we are going to have a set of LEDs also connected to the Arduino. What is going to happen is the Arduino is going to send the temperature that it is reading to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi will process that information and then based off of what that temperature is, it will then send a command back to the Arduino to say what LED light should be turned on. So basically what is going to be happening here is that the Arduino is going to be used for both the input and the output uh, components of of this project, but the Raspberry Pi is actually going to be used for the compute. Now, this right here seems probably pretty simple. A lot of folks out there are probably thinking, hey, Eli, Eli, why don't just why don't you just use the Arduino to do that? If essentially all you're doing is is looking for thresholds to to turn on an LED, all of that can be done with the Arduino. And yes. <laughs> Yes, it can. The thing that I'm trying to show you here, though, is that you can send the values that the Arduino is pulling in from a sensor to a to the Raspberry Pi to a Python script. That Python script can then turn the values it's receiving from the Arduino into values for a variable. It can then process against those values and then valuables, and then it can actually send uh, commands to the Arduino. So imagine a more complicated system here where the values are being sent to the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is then inputting those values into a database, and then the Raspberry Pi can look, and you know, based off of what has happened in the past hour, in the past 10 minutes, in the past day, it can then determine uh, what should occur, what physical events should occur, and then from that, it could then send a command to the Arduino. Again, for a lot of the smarties out there, a lot of the people that are probably too smart to be watching these classes, a lot of the things that I do seem very simplistic, and it's like, well, well, if, I, if I'm going to do that, I would just use the Arduino. Why add the as Raspberry Pi? The point of, of adding the Raspberry Pi is to show you that you can turn those Arduino values into variable values within the Python script. You can then take actions based off of those values to then send back a command to your Arduino. So this project today is very simple, but it, it shows you, basically it gives you the outline on how to make much more complicated things if you understand you know, things such as you know MySQL and the rest of it. So with that, I'm going to be showing you how to do bi-directional communication today between your Arduino and your Raspberry Pi. Uh, I think this will be, be a pretty fun time. So the only warning warning for today's class is just to have a basic understanding of what is going on here because you can run into some problems with the, the Python when the Python tries to parse the data coming in from the Arduino. If you start giving the Python script crap data, you're going to get crap output. Well, you're not even really going to get crap output. Frankly, the entire damn thing is just going to fail, right? So back in a previous class, I, I'm using uh, parts of a code that we used in a previous class in order to be able to send serial commands to the Arduino. And in that previous uh, class, I put in a lot of extraneous information, basically information for the user to be able to understand how to work with a project, right? So basically, I put in a little command prompt that said, you know, type in, type in the command, um, you know, red, white, blue, all or off, right? And so that was actually being printed out on the serial monitor. Well, realize, realize what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be doing floats. So floats are numbers with decimals in them. And basically we want floats to be sent to our Python script and the Python is then going to parse those floats and then determine actions based off of, you know, ill, if, uh, else, if conditions. Well, if you send text, if you send text, <laughs> If you try to do conditionals uh, of numbers versus text, you're gonna run into all kinds of problems, right? And so the thing to understand is when you go and you look at your code, especially if you're going to reuse the code I've showed you in the past, you're going to have to rip out um, anything that you're printing out on the serial monitor that is not a number and is not relevant for today's class. So if, if you print 
printed out user prompts before for the serial monitor, realize we're not actually reading this through a serial monitor, the Python script is reading it. So basically eliminate anything. So eliminate any strings, eliminate any text, eliminate anything that would be printed out through the serial connection that doesn't have to do with the temperature readings. Again, if you don't, um, Best case scenario, you'll just get some extraneous numbers and you'll get some weird readings from it. Uh, worst, worst case scenario is the entire Python script just fails and it be, might be a little bit difficult to figure out what is going on. So just make sure your Arduino is only sending uh, the information that it needs to be needs to be sent. So let's go over to the workbench. Um, I will show you how this project works, then I will show you how to build this project, and then I'll show you the Arduino and the Python code to make it function. Okay, so here we have the project. Uh, we have an Arduino and we have our Raspberry Pi. Uh, one side of the Arduino, we have the analog temperature sensor. So the analog temperature sensor is basically connected to A0 on the Arduino. And then on the other side, we have this display with the LEDs. So we have a blue LED for when it's cold, a white LED for when the temperature is okay, and then a red LED for when it's hot. So the temperature reading is gonna come in through the Arduino. It is going to be sent to the Raspberry Pi over the USB connection, the Raspberry Pi is then going to process the value as it's received and then it's going to send a command back to the Arduino to turn on the LED. So it's a little cold down here as you as you may may remember. Let me warm up my hands a little bit. So if I put my, my finger on the temperature sensor, what we're going to see is that after a second the temperature goes above 60 degrees and so the light then becomes white. And then if we wait another few seconds, the temperature should go above 70. Uh, and then that point, the, uh, the little LED will then turn red. And of course, this is taking a couple of extra seconds. And there you go. So now it's going to turn red. So the important thing there is the temperature is coming in from the temperature sensor, getting process, getting turned into a value by the Arduino. That value is being sent to the Raspberry Pi. Raspberry Pi is then sending the command uh, back to the Arduino to turn on the LEDs. And so that's basically how this project works. So with that, let me show you just how to build the project and then we'll go and take a look at the code. So this is the physical build for the project and there should be nothing complicated here. Uh, we are using our analog temperature sensor. So this is the dynamic sensor I use for almost all of these test projects. Again, it's just an easy way to get, give you like a, a dy dynamic input for any of your projects. And then on the other side, basically we simply have the LEDs that are connected. We're using the 220 ohm resistors so we don't blow out the LEDs. Uh, red goes to digital pin 10, uh, white goes to digital pin nine, uh, blue goes to digital digital pin eight, they're all connected on the ground. And then the ground cable, uh, thing here goes back to the ground on the Arduino. <clears throat> so this particular bill for the project, again, at this point, should be very simple and, and run of the mill for you. This is all you have to do. As far as the Raspberry Pi is concerned, it's just a standard Raspberry Pi. Uh, we're using the default installation of Raspberry Pi OS on this. We're using the default Python. Nothing additional has been added to it. So this is all that's required in order to build this particular project. So with that, let's go over and take a look at the Arduino code itself. So here's the Arduino code. If you've been following along with the serial communication classes I've done in the past, you'll notice that this looks very similar. The real difference here between what we've done in uh, one of the other projects is that the only time we're going to be printing out, so serial.println here, we are simply going to be printing out the temperature F value. You will notice I am not printing out any additional text. I am not printing out anything additional because anything that I'm going to be sending to the Python script and the Raspberry Pi is going to get processed by by the, the, the Python script. And basically I just want to be processing the value of the temperature. So again, if, you, if you're if you using um, any projects from the past, do just make sure to rip out anything that might be extraneous that's getting printed out uh, to the serial connection. We go up here and so we have the string command. So basically this is going to be the string that we are going to be using for turning on the LED lights. So the command is going to be coming back from the Raspberry Pi. It'll be red, white, all right, red, white, White, blue, all, or off. And so that command is going to get processed. Uh, so we need to create the string here. We are then defining all of our pins. Uh, so what we have here is define sensor pin to A0. So the temperature sensor is connected to uh, analog zero. Blue is the digital eight. White is the digital nine. Red is the digital 10. We then come down here. We then have to start the serial monitor or the serial communication. Do remember to start that. And it's important that you put in the right speed. So by default, it should be 9600. 
main thing is the speed that is in this this sketch has to be the same speed that's in the Python script so just make sure that they're the same we then set the pin mode so basically for blue white and red LED we're going to be setting those digital pins to output so that we can actually turn the LEDs on then we're going to come down here this is the uh, this is a standard math that we use uh, to turn the values coming in from the analog temperature sensor into the either temperature Celsius or to temperature Fahrenheit what we really care about here is a temperature Fahrenheit we don't really worry about the math that math you just kind of copy and paste then what we're going to do here is serial dot print line and then the value for temperature F so here is where we send the value to the Raspberry Pi so this is where we send the value to the Raspberry Pi then the Raspberry Pi is going to process that value and then send a command back to the Arduino for what to do so with here, what we're going to do is if serial is available, so essentially if the, the serial communication is actually active, command, so that string we created before, is going to equal serial.readString until next line, until n. So basically, the Raspberry Pi is going to send a command, and so command here is going to equal whatever is in front of the slash n command trim so what this does is it trims off any white space so if there's any white space for any reason we're going to get rid of that again from a troubleshooting standpoint sometimes when the computers the devices are communicating they add in a little bit of white space just because you know there's there's a little, little white space would look good here the problem is is if you're doing conditionals <laughs> if you're doing if else's um, and you get white space again white with a white space at the end is different than white with no white space at the end so if you're testing against one of those you could run into problems so we're trimming that out so we're going to do here is then if command dot equals white so if the command that comes in is white then digital right the white led is going to be on blue is going to be off red is going to be off else if the command equals blue white is going to be off blue is going to be on uh, red is going to be off if com else if command equals red white off blue off red on else if command equals all they are all on else if command equals off all will be off uh, else so if for some reason you get some other weird thing coming in then it will just turn them all on just it's kind of sort of like an error if, uh, if that type of thing then we're going to put a delay down here we're just going to delay this whole loop for one second an important thing to remember again from a troubleshooting standpoint is don't don't put the delay here don't put the delay here right so you're gonna send a command the uh, the uh, Raspberry Pi is just going to compute, uh, compute what should happen and we'll send, we'll send a command back. So if you put a delay here, this entire system will fail because basically it'll send a command, it'll delay, it'll wait, the Raspberry Pi will send its response, but this will be delaying the script and so it won't actually read the response and so everything will fail. So if you're going to put a delay in this particular loop, put the delay at the very end or put the delay uh, at basically at the very beginning, put it outside this whole little command structure or you'll run into a problem. So with that, let's go over to the Raspberry Pi and I will show you what the Python script looks like. So here we are at the Raspberry Pi. Again, this is a stock standard Raspberry Pi. This has the latest Raspberry Pi OS with the latest updates. Um, I did not have to install anything additional for the Python to make this work. So this is just the stock standard Raspberry Pi. Uh, to get to Thani, you just click on the little icon up here, program, and you go to Thani, and you can open this up, and then you can write your code. Uh, so here, the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be importing that serial module. So the, mo the serial module allows you to actually do serial communication. Then, like we've done uh, in the past, is so if name equals main, then we're going to continue. So serial, so the serial connection is going to equal serial, all lowercase period, serial, one uppercase on the S, and then we're going to do dev, you know, forward slash TTY ACM, and this will be either ACM1 or ACM0. So I un in order to do this class, I unplugged the Arduino and plugged it back in, and so when I did, it iterated this up, so I go to ACM1. ACM Originally, it was ACM0. So again, just from a troubleshooting standpoint, realize if you have this as ACM0 and it doesn't work, or if you have it at ACM1 and it doesn't work, just change it to the other one and, uh, and it, it will probably work for you. Uh, then we're going to have the uh, 9600 here. So again, that is the speed that we talked about in the Arduino sketch. So just make sure that that's the same as what's in the sketch. And then we're gonna timeout equals one second. So basically, if there's an issue with a serial connection, after one second, it will simply time out. It won't freeze up the entire script. Uh, we're then just going to flush. So we're gonna be flush the buffer of uh, any additional information. And then we're going to go into the while loop. 
so the while loop here is uh, pretty simple. It's all within a few lines of code. So while true, so this will just continuously loop, 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 loop. So if serial is in waiting is greater than zero, zero. So basically if there's a serial communication, then what we're going to do is the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to create a value for the variable line. So what is being sent from the Arduino that the first thing that we're going to do is process that. So here what we're going to do is line equals serial or ser dot read line dot decode to utf hyphen eight. So this will turn it into a string, it'll turn it into text, and then R strip, this will get rid of the white space. Then what we're going to do, just from a troubleshooting standpoint, is then we're going to print out on the little shell screen down below uh, what the line is. So when we're doing troubleshooting, if we're trying to figure out why the LEDs aren't lighting up, <clears throat> an important thing to know is you know what temperature is is the sensor actually reading. So this will print that out on the shell down here just so we know what's happening. Then what we're going to do is if, and here, I just replicated this a couple of times. There's probably an easier way of doing this. But basically, that line right here is going to be a string. So even though it's a number, it's a string. And you can't do a, you can't do a numeric comparison on a string, right? Uh, 40, F-O-R-T-Y, is different than 4-0, essentially, right? So when this comes in, basically this turns that, that number value into a string. And so if you simply try to test, so if line is greater or equal to 60, if you don't have the float in there, then, then it's going to fail out because you're trying to compare a string to a number and it'll fail. So what this function does here is float turns the string into a float. So a float is a number with a decimal point in it. So if float line, so line gets turned into a float, is less than or equal to 60, then serial.write, and then we use this B. This B basically says how to encode the text. So you're almost always going to use B. And then we send the command within the double quotation marks. So if it's less than or equal to 60, we're going to send the command blue. And this, this slash in, that, that basically tells our Arduino where the command is. And so this is going to be sent to the Arduino. And the Arduino is going to process it. It's going to be blue. And so it's then going to turn on the blue, blue LED. L if, so again, in the Python world, it's not else if, it's E-L-I-F, that float line thing going on. So we turn that line uh, value into a float is greater than 60 and float line is less than or equal to 70, serial dot right. So send the command. The command we're going to be sending is white. Uh, L if float line, what we we're doing before is greater than 70, serial dot right, you know, red. So it'll send red. So else, again, another troubleshooting thing that you can do in case you really hash up the conditionals, and sometimes it happens, right? Print be all. And so what will happen here is this will send the all command so all the LEDs will light up. So if I'm sitting there and I'm looking at my Arduino project and all the LEDs light up, I know that there's probably something wrong with the, the conditionals in here, right? So when, I, when I'm doing greater thans and less thans and equals tos, it's really easy to screw it up. So like there's one temperature in there where nothing happens right so this will just print everything up and so with that that's basically what we have so let me uh, increase the size of the shell here and then we will go over so we have this on the screen so we have the actual project on the screen and then i'm going to hit run script so it's running the bidirectional arduino.py and so we can now see this is the temperature reading so again when we do print line this is the uh, what the, the temperature reading is, is if I go over and I put my finger on the temperature value, the sensor, the temperature will go up. So we now see it's in the 60s, and so the white LED is on, and then hopefully the temperature will go up. It's a little cold down here. Come on, there we go, my hands are cold. And so now the temperature goes above 70, and we can see the red LED is on. And so we can verify, we can verify with the output in the shell what the temperature is and that the LEDs are responding how they're supposed to. So I take my finger off of the temperature sensor. We see it goes down to the white again, goes down my, with my finger off the temperature sensor in another few seconds or so. It should then go below 60, and it should go be back down to being blue, hopefully. If it's cold enough down here. It's a cold room. It's cold. Hey, if you're going to be a technology professional, you got to get used to working in a cold environment. 
You know, working down in my basement, it reminds me of a server room. <laughs> it's a less equipped server room, I suppose. Uh, okay, so we're going down to dot six five. There we go, down to five nine, and then there we go. So we saw the blue, and then it goes up a little bit, and then it goes down. And we, again, we can see that, that that part is actually working. Whether or not the sensor is being spastic, that's its own thing. So anyways, that's basically uh, how this project works. So there you go. Now you know how to get your Arduino and Raspberry uh, Pi communicating bi-directionally. The communication goes both ways. Uh, again, I think this can be very interesting because now essentially what you can do is you can use your Arduino as a subsystem. So for all the sensors or the motors or anything like that, you can design a system just specifically designed for those things. And then essentially you can use the Raspberry Pi more or less as a compute module. So it can process what's coming in from the Raspberry Pi. It can put that information into a data store such as a database or maybe communicate with APIs, all of that type of thing. And then it can send commands back to the Arduino. Again, for the love of crikey, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. I get like these 20 year professionals watching these introductory videos. <laughs> And they're always like, Eli, that's stupid. That's stupid. You could do all of, you could do that entire project on the Arduino. It's like, yes, yes, basically I could. The point that I'm trying to show you here, the point I'm trying to show you is how uh, using Python, you can take these values in, you can then, you can do conditionals, you can do if else statements, you can print them out, you can store them to data stores, you could do something and then based off of that, you can then send commands to the Arduino. So to be clear here, you, you could have a thousand lines of code on your Raspberry Pi to determine what to do with the readings that are coming in from the Arduino. I'm just showing you how to do it in 18. I'm just, I'm just giving you a basic idea here. But you know, something to be thinking about. Like you could have numerous sensors on your Arduino. So you could have, you could have an array of like ultrasonic distance sensors. So if you're going to do an autonomous vehicle, you could have 10 ultrasonic distance sensors. You could have eight uh, infrared uh, distance sensors for for close distance. You could have a GPS. You could have a few other sensors. All of that information could be brought in from the Arduino, essentially sent to the Raspberry Pi have that Raspberry Pi look at all of that information and then based off of other things, it, it, can, it, it can then determine what your vehicle should do and then send the command down to the vehicle. So when you're looking at this, I'm just showing, showing you the basics here. Come on, man, come on. So, uh, so, but I think this is very cool. I think this is very cool, especially again, if you start thinking about like the Raspberry Pi Zero. So uh, I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4B here. I think they cost about $45. So that's kind of expensive for a compute module for something like an Arduino project. But again, I think the Raspberry Pi Zero comes in at like $10. I think you can buy it for $10. So realistically, that's as much as many of the other modules would cost for for an Arduino project. So that's what that's why I say, think, think of the Raspberry Pi more for this type of thing as a compute module just like you would have a motor module or you might have a sensor module think of the raspberry pi essentially for this type of project as a compute module it just simply allows your project to have a little bit more of a brain you can actually program in a real freaking programming language again uh, i've been doing a lot of arduino projects for you folks showing you how you can use an arduino as a web server showing you how to send the commands and all that kind of thing over the web and let me tell you yes can the Arduino be a web server? Yeah, it can be. <laughs> I'd rather be coding in a, in a little more, bit more complex uh, coding language uh, than what you've got for the Raspberry Pi. Again, you run into a lot of issues with the Raspberry Pi, like for, for the... Uh, for the data logging module. Again, a data logging module or data logging shield is gonna cost you 10 or $15 on its own, right? But like with the data logging module with the Raspberry Pi, I think it's called the 8.3 naming convention. So basically uh, your, your, the name for any file that you're gonna create can only be eight characters with a period with three characters for the extension. You're locked into that. So you're, you, you are essentially locked in to 11 characters for whatever the hell you're gonna be naming your files, which doesn't seem like a big deal until you're actually trying to create projects and realize, oh, all right, that can be a pain in the butt. So, so instead of having a data logging module uh, connected to your, your Arduino project, if you simply have a Raspberry Pi and then that Raspberry Pi is able to store those values just like a normal computer stores values because essentially it is just a normal computer, um, 
that again, like those little things make your life easier. Again, a Raspberry Pi, you know, zero uh, costs you ten dollars, and a data logging module costs you ten dollars. The Raspberry Pi Zero just gives you a hell of a lot more functionality. Then you get the web stack on top of it. Then you get a lot of other things. Um, so that that's why the Raspberry Pi and doing this type of communication gets very interesting. And although what I'm doing may look like I'm overbuilding a project, I would say once you start understanding what I'm doing, it really opens a hell of a lot of doors for you. So I do think it's a very interesting thing. So as always, I enjoy teaching this class. I look forward to seeing the next one.